In the 40s and 50s, bebop music was invented. Nobody, of course, sat down and invented bebop. But at the same time, more people were practicing jazz music and figuring out how to play extensively over chord progressions. The development of the playing of Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk, Charlie Green, and many other musicians at that time just resulted in the new bebop style. Simply said, is the bebop music directed towards more eight note lines and more chromaticism in the lines. Coming up in this video, understanding the chromatic approach principles of a bebop. Use chromatic approach notes and fit in the chord scale relation. Get two, two, five, one lines using chromatic approach notes played and analyzed and written down. Get the full subscription of this lesson on my Patreon page. Hi, I'm Sam Balagorn. Welcome to Sam Balagorn's saxophone lessons. Like and subscribe if you like my tutorials. Get the free saxophone practice PDF, subscribe to my newsletter, get the download link on my website. Bebop and chromatic approach notes, let's go! What is a chromatic approach note? A chromatic approach note is leading towards a target note in a half step way. The chromatic approach note can be both diatonic or be outside the diatonic scale. There are different combinations of chromatic approach notes Commonly, all are used in the same way to lead to a target note. Understanding the chromatic approach note. First, I'll run through a couple of different chromatic approach note scenarios to give you a good impression what this is. As an example, we can play the 5 of a 2-5-1 in G. Playing on the dominant the D7 chord would have the target notes D, F sharp, A and C. One way to use the chromatic approach is a half step from under the target note. If I want to go to the C, the seventh of the D7, I would use a half step under the C to get to this note. I put a half step underneath my target note, the C, so I put a B there and I move towards the C. The B happens to be a diatonic note in the D7 dominant scale. It would sound like this. Another example, if you want to go to the target note A, the fifth of the D7. As chromatic approach note, we can use the G sharp, which is a half step underneath the A. This is not a diatonic step. This is a chromatic step under the A, moving towards the A. This is the general rule for chromatic approach notes from under the target note. You can use this on all notes of the D7 chord. To the third of the D7, the F sharp, the chromatic note would be A is. Why do I write the A's? Because then I don't have two F's, the F and the F sharp in one line. And of course, we have a chromatic approach note to the root of the D7 chord, the C sharp to the D. For this tutorial, I've made a great lesson asset PDF. 32 chromatic approach note structures and 20 chromatic approach note licks on the 251. You can get this in my shop and you can also subscribe to my Patreon site where you can get lots of more stuff. This material gives you a lot of options where you can easily make 25 licks and get the approach note structures into your playing very fast. I highly recommend you to check this out. Fitting the chromatic approach in a chord scale relation. To use the chromatic approach note well, it's important to understand the function it provides. The chromatic approach note is not the most important factor. The most important factor is the target note. Another thing to be very keen on is how the chromatic approach note sounds. Is the sound functional or is it just obscuring the goal, which is getting out that clear target note? Is the chromatic approach note obscuring the target note 
or is it making the target note sound more clear? We want that last one. We want the target note to be very, very clear. The next examples are playing the chromatic approach note in melodic examples in jazz line. When we add one of our earlier examples in context with the dominant scale, it could look like this. The B leading to the C on the D7, running down the scale after this. Check this out. One, two, three, four. The same thing you can apply to the G sharp leading to the A on the D7. So the G sharp leading to the A, the fifth of the D7. Then we're running down the scale exactly as in the previous example. One, two, three, four. I'm making the target notes very clear. That's also why I'm starting on one end and not on one. So I have the target notes on the beats the whole time. It's very important to have the target notes of the D7, the D, the F sharp, the A and the C on the beats of the bar. That makes your lines very clear. Two, chromatic approach notes. Often you come in a situation where you have to use more approach notes. The general rule is one diatonic step above and one chromatic step below. But of course in jazz we are also breaking all rules. So this is a general rule but it's if you listen to any play in the, in the, in the business they're breaking the rules all the time. So this is a general rule, one diatonic step above, one chromatic step below. In the next example, I'm going to the F sharp using this method. From the G, the diatonic note above the F sharp, going to the chromatic approach note under the F sharp, that's the F or the Ace, under the target note and then hitting the F sharp. <laughs> Adding it to the scale could sound like this. A more extensive way of using the chromatic and diatonic approach notes could look like this. A to G around the F sharp to the E, adding the chromatic approach note A's or the F ending on the F sharp. Ready for this one? These examples lead us to the next step. Two, two, five, one licks using chromatic approach notes. I play these great licks in G major, so the two is the A minor seven, the five is the D seven, and the one is the G major seven. Two, five, one in G, here goes. <laughs> chromatic approach note. We run up the C major arpeggio, an extension of the A minor 7 9. At the top we come to the B, which is again a chromatic leading note to the C. Down the A minor chord, the E on the D7 is the ninth, leading chromatically to the F sharp through the A's, the F. From the F sharp we go down to the D7 dominant scale. Between D and C, we put the famous bebop half-step chromatic approach note. With the A sharp, we lead to the major third of the G major, the B, going up the chord and scale. Surrounding the G with the A and the F sharp, ending on the sixth of the G major seven. The second two five one lick in G major, A minor, D seven, G major, using chromatic approach notes. <laughs> Seven. Moving down the C major triad arpeggio on that A minor, adding the ninth to the A minor, the B between the C and the A, a little scale action there. From the F sharp, chromatically down to the E, the ninth of the D7, hitting that D7 on the ninth, down the A minor triad on that D7, an upper structure of the D7 chord, chromatically from the E sharp to the F sharp. Moving up the chord of the D7, chromatically going to the fifth of the G major seven, the D, down the scale, jumping to the A, 
going chromatically up to the third of the G major seven, playing chord notes of the G major seven, and ending on that wonderful F sharp, the seventh of the G major seven. I have a great tip. Check out the 32 chromatic approach note structures and 20 chromatic approach notes 251 leaks PDF in my shop and on my Patreon page. This practice model is a great asset and can help you further in creating much more of these kind of licks. If you like this bebop style, check the following video out. That's the bebop scale. Keep watching, it's right there. In the beginning of the video, I played the wonderful tune of I Remember April. Check it in my shop and check the full transcription on my Patreon page. Have fun and play music.